Hi guys, uh, my name is Ed Williams. Welcome to iDrum. This is the last of six lessons uh, talking about odd meters or odd time signatures. So over the past five lessons, we started out by talking about the, the building blocks, the twos and threes, the fundamentals of constructing odd meters. Then I had uh, a look at meters that are quarter note based, five, four, seven, four, and so on. And then the third lesson was dealing with eighth note based signatures, so the five, eight, seven, eight, and uh, beyond then as well. And then the fourth lesson was actually dealing with odd groupings rather than um, odd time signatures. So uh, to start with uh, groups of um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, as sixteenth notes, and then using that as a template to play four four in my hands, but then have the bass drum show off these odd groupings, focusing on threes, fives, and sevens, because they're the they're the weird ones that go across the beat. So um, so that was a quick look at that, and then the the last lesson that I did, the fifth lesson, was dealing with time signatures that have a sixteenth note as their main subdivision. So we were talking about um, the likes of 15, 16, 17, 16, uh, 21, 16, so on and so forth. And uh, with that one, there were kind of two basic kind of avenues to get you into that. Either you take um, a 5-8 um, groove or, or a 7-8 groove and then multiply it as a way of building up, say, a 15-note thing. So 15 was f uh, 3 times 5 or 21 would be three times seven, and then you can build it up like that, okay? So I explore all of that in the last lesson. Then uh, the other avenue was dealing with taking a, a more known time signature, like three, four, or four, four, and then either subtract or add a 16th note. So for three, four, it would be uh, taking one away would give you 11, 16, or adding one would give you 13, 16. And what I demonstrated was doing the same thing, but from 4-4. Four, four. So you take one away, you've got 15-16. And then adding one on top, you end up with 17-16. So if you want to check that out, by all means, check it all out. Now, this, uh, this last one deals... Um, with um, all of the kind of odd time things, all of the new stuff has probably kind of been dealt with um, in previous lessons, you know, how to play in 5-8 and how to play in 5-4. Now, what I tend to find uh, listening to kind of more mainstream styles is that you're going from a standard time signature into an odd one, okay? So, obviously, check out these... Uh, uh, different styles of music than perhaps you're used to. You know, you're having to hunt out different styles of music in order to hear uh, drumming in odd times. Uh, but of course, you know, have a listen to the stuff that you're already listening to and see if you can spot, oh yeah, that tune's got one section where it's in 7-8 or 7-4 or something like that, you know, or there might be one track on an album that the rest of the album's in 4-4, four, four, but then you've got that one track where it's in 5 or something like that. Okay, now some of the artists that I've been uh, mentioning or some of the grooves that I've had a look at, it's just that, like Money by Pink Floyd, that's the, that's the one that's in seven on that album. Uh, I had a look at a groove for times like these by the Foo Fighters, where the rest of the track is in a more standard time signature, and then you've got that one uh, track that's in seven, seven, four. So, um, so what we'll have a look at today is actually moving from 4-4 four four into different uh, time signatures and then back, okay? So I'd like to go from 4-4 four four into 5-4 and then have a look at going from 4-4 um, four four into 5-8 as well because you often get that. It kind of jumps from 4-based or quarter note based to an eighth note based thing. And then um, have a look at going from an odd time into... Uh, a standard time, so maybe 7-4 into 4-4 or 7-8 into 4-4, okay? So, let's have a look at um, going from 4-4 to 5-4, okay? Now, let's see, uh, I'll try and spell out where the changes are, okay? But you can always, as it starts, you can always start your counting off, okay? You can keep it counting 
and um, after a while you'll be able to dispense with the counting. Don't hang on to the counting longer than you need to, but to start with it'll offer you a great structure to work with. So here we go, 4-4 four, four into 5-4. So that was um, going from 4-4 uh, to 5-4 and it might not have been clear at the beginning but then uh, I moved over to the ride to show you the difference between the two time signatures. Okay, so now I'm going to mess it up a little bit more and um, I'll play some 4-4 four, four, and then some 5-4 but instead of one bar of each I'll, uh, I'll go for multiple bars and see how that goes. So just to show you another side of it, instead of doing a straight eights version, I did a, a swung eights version there. Because both time signatures are quarter note based, you can, you can afford to do that. When you're going from 4-4 uh, four, four into say 5-8, that's not necessarily the case because you've got eighth notes as your, uh, your odd time when it comes up to it. So when you're trying to swing five eighth notes, you could get yourself into a bit of trouble. So um, let's, uh, let's have a look at how we get from 4-4 four, four to 5-8. So um, now in the, in the eighth note based lesson, one of the suggestions that I gave you guys was to put the backbeat on the three part, okay? As long as the three isn't coming at the beginning. So uh, that's what we're gonna do here. We'll play a normal 4-4 four, four, and then on the end of the 5-8, uh, you're gonna have a snare and two hi-hats instead of one hi-hat, okay? What I'll, what I'll do is I'll change over to the ride just to show you when we're going into 5-8. Okay, here we go. Again, I'm creating a nice solid ground, just going around the pattern a few times, keep it straightforward while you find your feet, and then start to add a few different things. By all means, you know, pick one idea that I did and then just see if you can nick it and, and put it into your own playing. It's all up for grabs, non-copyrightable, so it's all there, it's all, it's all there for you. And uh, just as any stuff off record is, you know, so uh, feel free to steal away. So, um, now we can have a look at the reverse of what we're going to do. We could go from an odd time and then just put in a bar of 4-4 four, four as and when uh, we feel like it. So I'll play uh, some odd time, let's say uh, 7, and then I'll just put in a cheeky bar of 4-4 four, four every now and again and just see, uh, see where we go to. So this is going to be 7-4 into 4-4. Four, four.
So, so there you go. You've got, um, on average, it was four bars of seven four, and then I just go over to four four. So being able to kind of go from one to the other is also essential. I mean, it's essential when you're learning uh, a lick or a particular pattern to be able to go into it from somewhere and get out of it as well. You know, it's the first part, obviously, yeah, you just learn the pattern, try and get the pattern repeated, but then also being able to access the pattern while you're also doing something. Because unlike some other instruments, you know, we've got a very consistent kind of role that we have to play, constantly keeping the groove there, keeping the time there, but then thinking about ideas that we've got. We don't get a little break. We've got to just be thinking on our feet whilst we're playing something. So, um, the next thing is going to be 7-8 into 4-4. Four, four. So I'll play a bunch of 7-8 and then move over to 4-4. Four, four. So there we go, you've got uh, a bunch of 7-8 and because 7-8 is kind of close to 8-8, eight, 4-4 eight, four, four, and the, the backbeat is so far through the bar, it kind of almost sounds like a half time thing going into a normal 4-4. Four, four. You know, that's kind of how it felt to me. So you might want to play around with where you put the backbeat in 7-8 and the kind of subdivision that you want to use as well, you know, the groups of threes and twos and see how that goes. Okay, so. Now we get on to the final subject of this uh, column, of this subject, and that is um, where you can actually have internal time signatures. So um, say you've got 5-4, what you've also got in there if you were to play straight eighth notes is 10 eighth notes. So you could chop them in half and have 5 eighth notes and 5 eighth notes. And even further than that, you could go, okay, well, let's go 16th notes. So in 5-4, you could have two bars of 5-8, four bars of 5-16. So, um, you know, mathematically, it works the same way as it would with, say, uh, 16th notes, where you've got quarter notes, then eighth notes, and then 16th notes, and they're all part of the same grid. It's just that you've picked an odd grouping, like five or like seven or something like that. So um, what, uh, the way that we go about perhaps combining those two is um, playing, spelling out the accents of one and then spelling out the, the overlying pulse of another, okay? So let me explain this by giving you a flavor of a track called uh, Seven Days by uh, Sting. So this is kind of in the style of that, okay? But there's, because there's other instrumentation, the drums aren't doing a lot uh, to spell out one of the groups. So I'm gonna put a little bit extra in there just to show you what's going on. Now, if I just play this without putting any accents on the hi-hat, what you end up with is this. So what's happening there is I'm playing um, two, two bass drums and then the snare, and it just sounds like 5-8 really, like almost a kind of a, a syncopated 5-8. And uh, it just sounds like two, two of those bars. But then what I'm gonna do is if I accent the first of every two hi-hats, what you end up with is a one and two and three and four and five, one and two and three and so on and so forth. So, uh, then you put that underneath and you get a kind of 5-8 and 5-4 at the same time. So it goes like this. I'll start with 5-8, then I'll put the accent in, and then you can see how later on it uh, creates a kind of inverted feel. So...
So there's 5-4 uh, basically being played on the hi-hat there. The accent pattern is giving me that 5-4. And uh, the, the bass drum and the snare drum, particularly the snare drum, uh, which marks out the, the two part of a 5-8. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Um, shows me where the 5-8 is working as well. So uh, it was uh, Vinnie Colliuta, I believe, that was playing drums on that. He's playing some 16th notes instead of 8s on there, but he's giving a lovely uh, accent there. And he's actually only marking the, the first of uh, the two bass drums that I'm playing, but that's because there's a synth marking the second one. So he really shows a very straightforward look at how to play 5-8 and 5-4 at the same time. And you want to have a listen to the other instrumentation as well to just see what's going on. So, uh, so that brings me pretty much to the end. It's been great, really interesting um, reliving this stuff again and delivering it to you guys. And I hope you've enjoyed it and um, see you soon.